Hillary Clinton, what a bitch, what a bitch, Hillary, Billary, Killary, she is a warmonger, Kissinger, Billary, who are we going to have president between the two of them, it's a fucking dynasty, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Clinton, what, till the day we fucking die, and, um, and she's a bitch, she's such a bitch, and the way I mean it, yeah, I, everything about Hillary Clinton is just very disagreeable with me, she does have a man problem, she's got this man's problem, and Trump has a woman's problem. Or a female problem. So uh, there's something going on here, right? Uh, but Hillary Clinton, compare her to Jill Stein. Jill Stein is wonderful and sweet and delicate, and you just want to eat her up, and she's right about all of her policies, so you want to fight and protect her. If Jill Stein said we need to go to war with South Africa or Canada, I would believe her. I would go to war for Jill Stein. Now, when it comes to, you know, Gary Johnson versus Jill Stein, that's the only real decision that you have to make in a safe state. And they're actually the only two principled ones out of the bunch. These other ones are just a bunch of, you know, fucking compromising, triangulating, you know, fake fucking mainstream assholes. But Hillary Clinton's a bitch. She's such a bitch. In fact, she has those big eyes. Those big ass eyes. If you were just to go ahead and look... Uh, at Michelle Bachman. Have you seen one of the pictures of Michelle Bachman where she's like staring off to the side of the wrong camera? Or there was that one woman in Texas who killed her two daughters, right? She just texted her, Facebooked them, and said on the status, you know, you, I love you more than life itself. You're so dear to me and all this horse shit. And then one day, because her husband looked like she was, uh, her husband was drifting away from her, but she loved. Um, he loved his daughters but didn't love her anymore, and maybe they started being disrespectful to her or some shit. She got pissed off, pulled out a fucking gun, and killed them, murdered them. While it was on 911, you hear the gunshots and everything, and then the husband takes off running, and he truly believes, and a lot of people say this, that she killed them to hurt him. To hurt him. Because he loved the daughters, but he didn't love his soon-to-be ex-wife. And she was a fucking psycho. She was a fucking lunatic. And they're always at odds with one another. But she had those eyes like, you know, like she was a psycho. She was a fucking psycho. She did not give a shit about anybody but her own damn self. She's got the Michelle Bachman kind of face. Those wide eyes, wide, you know, just spacey. There's nothing behind it. It's a vapid emptiness. It's a psychopath. It's somebody who cannot empathize with you. She cannot put herself in someone else's shoes. She gets up there and says whatever fucking bullshit, you know, uh, she thinks the public wants to hear. And she's wrong on all the fucking issues. She's wrong on war. She's wrong on marijuana. She's wrong on the war on drugs. She's wrong on, you know, the solutions to poverty. If the, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, what's that, basic income, universal basic income. She's even wrong on fucking Medicare for all. She wants to add a public option to Obamacare instead of actually having Medicare for all. So, Hillary Clinton's a bitch. She is such a fucking bitch. She's a, a, a psychopathic, unempathetic bitch. So, you know, I know that's a sexist term. So, a bitch is nothing but a female asshole. So, she's an asshole. She's a fucking, and I can't stand a man who's an asshole or a woman. And when I reassess Obama, like, I, I did give him a pass because he was black and it pissed off my, you know, some of my racist family members. Uh, but that's, that, I mean, that only could take him for so long. He's stuck up. He's a stuck-up snob. Now, in times of crisis, he is a good, solid rock. He is a good figurehead. He's a good public speaker. So, you know, good for him. He kept the country afloat. But in terms of the empire, the Kissinger-esque empire, he's carried that on, the drone war, the NDAA. There's indefinite, you know, uh, uh, detention without uh, charges. And if you're a suspected terrorist, they could throw a whole bunch of shit at you. So Trump, you know, Trump, it uh, doesn't fucking matter uh, when it comes to Trump. There's, there's good and bad with both Hillary and Trump, and more bad than good for both of them, in my opinion. I can't trust Hillary. I think she's a fucking psycho, so I, wouldn't tr I can't trust anything that comes out of her fucking mouth. She can't win my trust now by promising me this and that. She could win my trust. I, I don't know how she could win my trust. 
Um, I've been watching her live for decades, so, I mean, I don't know if it's possible for her. She's not going to change who she is. She's going to maintain, stay the course, because clearly she convinces that some dumb fucks out there, and it just shows you how conservative and scared the Democrats are because they're clinging on to her, like she's their last and only hopeful savior. Bernie Sanders had won every one of those polls against Trump. When it was Hillary versus Donald uh, side by side, they were, you know, virtually tied. Bernie beat the shit out of Donald Trump in all the polls. So the Democrats didn't go with the smart, strategic one who actually had more popularity and could beat Trump. They went with the uh, presumptive, the, you know, the next in line, the Democratic next in line people. So I, I think that's important to understand. Trump, uh, Kentucky, it doesn't fucking matter. You know, uh, the Young Turks, they went up there and say, not Young Turks, but uh, Kyle, I want to say Brzezlowski or something, but I think that's South Park. I don't know, the secular something. He says that uh, you have to make a decision between Hillary and Trump. I don't think I have to make that decision. If I really thought that those were the only two fucking options and that my vote would be multiplied by thousands and whoever I decided would become president, you know, I would really do a side-by-side -side analysis, write my top ten issues, see which ones actually side with each one of those. That's whoever aligns with most of my policy ideas is who would win. I think they would be pretty much equal when it comes to their leadership styles. All they have is a pin. they got to sign their name to some legislation or veto shit they don't like. So their opinions about policies is really all that fucking matters. they got the bully pulpit so they can make speeches and try to make some headway for what they want, what they believe. they also got to be a good face for the State of the Union, and they're our face around the world. They'll be the monarch, so they'll be the face of America. So those are largely symbolic powers, and there's no way to gauge those powers. Their only real power is, well, they could sign laws, and they could veto laws, but they're also the executive branch. The police department works for the executive branch. The executive is above the police. Execute, executive branch. So really, it's all executive branch. Judicial judges, if it's constitutional and what's, you know, what happened, what didn't, what are the facts of the case, but the executive branch is one that enforces their policies. And so they got to get the rest of society on board, usually pass some fucking law and then tell everybody to pass them. Anyways, when it comes to Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, without doubt, wins. Now, I like both of the candidates. Compared to Hillary and Trump, the reality on the, you know, on the ground is that I have four other fucking choices. I, the reality is I, those aren't the only two choices. It's not just a binary decision for me. Kentucky, I, I'm going to go ahead and give Kentucky to Trump. I don't give a shit if maybe, the, you know, they voted for Hillary over Obama. So you might actually see some Democrats come out who's been, you know, proud or loving Hillary. But I don't think so. I think they're conservative most of the time. And so when they have a choice between a liberal something and conservative something, they'll go with the liberal or they'll go with the conservative something, no matter how fucking conservative the liberal acts like. So no matter how right-wing Hillary is and no matter how liberal Trump is, Kentucky is going to go to Trump. I'll bet a thousand bucks on it. I guarantee fucking it. That matters because that makes Kentucky a safe state. Therefore, that makes Jill Stein the only logical choice. Jill Stein or Gary Johnson, I want my vote to matter. So fuck the Democrats and fuck the Republicans. You didn't win my vote. You lost my vote. I'm not going to just fall in line. You're not going to make me heal. Hillary Clinton. I don't like any of your fucking policies. You are just as big of an antithesis of everything I believe as Trump is. So very much as the lesser of the two evils. And, you know, I'm voting for the greater good. So my reality is Kentucky is going to vote for Donald Trump. So assuming, you know, the elections go as they've been going in America for the last 30 to 40 fucking years, uh, Kentucky will go Donald Trump and so if you just got in line and you just healed like a bunch of sheep who can't wait to suck their daddy's dick, then that's you're a Trump supporter. So fuck you. You hurried up and got in line. Why would he give a shit? Even Kissinger opposed Nixon and became his, you know, a national security advisor. He became a member of his cabinet. And so therefore, if you want to become part of the member of the cabinet, that's when you um, become part of the member of the cabinet. You have to oppose the person that you're actually 
confronting that you're actually going, you know, uh, and so they'll respect you for it. If you just fall in line, uh, Mitch McConnell said that everybody's a bunch of enemies or idiots. So therefore, you're opposed to me because you're an individual and you have your own independent thinking mind, or you're just a fucking lap dog. You're just a little peon bitch. You're just gonna fall in line. Shut the fuck up, Republicans. Fall in line. Vote for your daddy, Donald Trump. Lick his fucking balls. And when you do that, that gives you no power. You know, if I want something from you, if I want, I don't know, your car, and you've offered it for, I don't know, whatever. If I want your car, I'll make an offer, and then if you want to sell, we'll make a deal, right? So. Uh, if you know that I want your car, then you could, you know, double how much you thought it was actually worth. Maybe you thought it was a thousand bucks, but then you realize I wanted it, so you said, well, okay, two thousand. And um, so when you know that I want something, you hold that something back, and you try to get as much as you can for that something. I'm that way with my vote, uh, and that's the only thing I know politicians want my vote and a lot of other people's votes. And so, therefore, if I'm able to influence anybody, then that expands, you know, my political power. But really, I just have political power of one vote. And when it comes down to donations, volunteer time, um, you know, the, just getting out the vote, if you just knocked on ten doors, you've multiplied your political power by ten. And so, therefore, you know, you actually fucking are relevant. What's one fucking vote? One fucking vote ain't shit. I've heard that campaigns would rather you donate to them. Give them money so they could get airtime and get like a hundred new voters. Uh, but your fucking one vote? Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. When has an election never been decided by one vote? Even that close Matt Bevin race in the Republican primary was 83 votes. So even that Florida fucking vote was like two or three hundred. So even the very close fucking votes are still, you know, 80 to 200 away. So your one vote ain't shit. So when it comes to war, poverty, marijuana, when I try to think about real simple what my major issues are, my quick litmus test, what are your thoughts on war? Jill Stein, Gary Johnson are both right when it comes to war. They're against imperialism, bring this shit back. Let's, you know, let's stop these fucking wars of empire. And when it comes to the war on drugs and the legalization of marijuana, they're both 100% on war, 100% on marijuana. And when it comes to poverty, that's when Gary Johnson loses, and that's when Jill Stein wins. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. So Bernie, you know, capitulated into his people's rainbow rebellion is going to die down. It's only going to be a rainbow rebellion. It doesn't become a full-on revolution until we win. And the only way Bernie's revolution will win is if Jill Stein becomes president. That's the only fucking way. Now, when it comes to Jill Stein versus Gary Johnson, what do we want, capitalism or socialism? We need a synthesis of the two. We need a half capitalistic, half socialistic. So, therefore, uh, I'm socialistic when it comes to people, when it comes to the people's basic needs. So, I'm socialist when it comes to people's basic needs, and I'm capitalist to uh, expand over sustenance to. Uh, evolve to get bigger, to make, you know, to, uh, you get a right to eat, sleep, shelter, if you live in this country, but if you want to go above and beyond, um, to, you know, capitalism for above sustenance, so sustenance, you're guaranteed, if you want above sustenance, then that's when capitalism is, capitalism is, uh, the socialist forgets the individual, and the capitalist forgets the society, we need to care about the society, we need to care about the individual, we need to care about both of them, and we need a synthesis of the two, this uh, question has been actually, you know, figured out a long time ago, it's why we got social security, it's why we got, you know, welfare, food stamps, roads, and police, and fire departments, and public school system, so we've already figured out that the government should be part of our lives, but shouldn't be all of our lives, should leave room for, you know, competition and the free market. But that's Gary Johnson. He's a wild casino style, you know, fucking just a anarcho-capitalist. He's an anarchist. And so he says that the government which governs best is the one that governs least. He's not just against government when it comes to abortion. He believes in the right to privacy, so he's in favor of abortion and prostitution and uh, drugs. So he believes that you're allowed to, you know, get doped up on any drugs you want and uh, sell your body to whoever you want, which is exactly right. That's absolutely right. But he also believes that government shouldn't do shit when it comes to, you know, all the shit that I just fucking mentioned. He would privatize all government, keep up just the very, you know, courts and whatever you need in order for the society to function or the corporations to function, and then just let them all hash it out themselves. 
So if we're all starting on the same level, and this is something Milton Friedman and Martin Luther King agreed on was the universal basic income. They both agreed on That's a right-wing economist and a democratic socialist. So Martin Luther King and Milton Friedman agreed that we all should have a universal basic income. If we all had a universal basic income, poverty is abolished. There's no more fucking poverty. It's gone. It's ended. And so the universal basic income is genius because you can cut out every other social program there is. So no more food stamps, welfare, social security, cut it all out. Everybody gets a fucking check, and that means, you know, everybody's guaranteed to survive. And if you're rich, then you just get another 10 to 15, 20, whatever fucking thousand, uh, however long, you know, much it takes to live within a year for one person to live. And who couldn't use a $10,000 check? Couldn't you get yourself a boat? Couldn't you get yourself... You know, a new car or some shit with 10000 bucks. everybody. And if you can't, if $10,000 ain't shit to you, then maybe you got too much fucking money to begin with. Um, but the universal basic income gets rid of poverty, and it makes me not give a shit about you. You have your fucking check. What'd you do with your check? You spend it on drugs? Fuck you. Now I believe in anarcho-capitalism if we all have a fighting chance, but we don't have a fighting chance. We're not even close to it yet. We're not even close. Take a look at Jill Stein or uh, Bernie Sanders. We just now started talking about socialism last year. Socialism isn't a dirty war any, uh, word anymore. So good job, Bernie Sanders. Socialism is no longer a dirty word, but do you know what the fuck socialism actually is? It's when the workers control the factors. It's when we, the working class, actually control, you know, the means of production. So the state or the factory or, you know, the means of production, the machines that make shit. The things that produce and make shit, we're supposed to control that shit. So this society is ours. That's what socialism is. And just last year, it's not a cuss word, just last year, we've been locking people up, we've been deporting people, we had a red scare, we had the McCarthyism, we've had people, socialists have been persecuted and attacked, even though they were Eugene Debs, they were the ones that warned us against imperialism, against the capitalist and the owner and oppressor class. And we should have listened to them. Our society would have been that much better. So until we all have a fighting chance, you're a fucking privileged prick. If you think, if you're such a scared fucking Democrat and you just want to hold on to power, then throw your fucking vote away. Throw your, especially if you live in a safe state. Fuck it, it doesn't matter. You know, if you're in Kentucky, Hillary Clinton may, I, I hear this might be a national campaign, which means the maps don't matter. Well, um, it, it, the, if it's a national campaign, then that makes Jill Stein and Gary Johnson relevant as fuck. They're relevant as fuck, if for the very least that they could take enough votes from either one of them to change the election. And if it's a national election, that means all four of these candidates are going to be viable in every fucking state. Especially if Gary Johnson hits the 15% mark, he gets in the fucking debates, she gets into it, or she's getting arrested. This is a four-way race. And I believe that. it's. I think it's 25, 25, 25. I think it's uh, not just a coin toss. It's, you know, whatever, four sides. You know, there's four choices. Um, two coin tosses. And so it's a four, it's a four-way race. So that's, um, you know, that's my thoughts on Jill Stein versus Gary Johnson, his anarcho-capitalistic uh, casino-style Wild West type of, you know, capitalistic system is admirable, it's exciting, and perhaps the free market, maybe that's why America is so much better than, you know, Soviet Russia, because the engine of capitalism is stronger than the en engine of communism. I could see that, I could understand that, but then you also got to see that having a bunch of bloodthirsty fucking cutthroat, you know, capitalists who's only out there to exploit the land, exploit the people, make as much, you know, money, extract the fucking raw material, produce into some shit self, you know, the fucking um, plebes, and hope the lumpen proletariat doesn't rebel against you. And so the revolution isn't complete, uh, you know, the, it's a rainbow rebellion. That's what Bernie Sanders is. It's just a rebellion because unless the revolution succeeds, it's just a rebellion. Nat Turner's rebellion, um, Shay's rebellion, these are attempted revolutions which failed. A rebellion that succeeds is a revolution, and the revolution will begin when Jill Stein wins. When Jill Stein wins, that's when the real work begins. So this is a rainbow rebellion. At best, it would go forth with Jill Stein. Jill Stein is closer to Bernie Sanders' platform than Hillary Clinton, shitting, fucking Billary, Killary, Shillery, Shrillery. 
it's yeah, it's bad. I can't I can't stand you know a word that comes out of that bitch's mouth. She's unlikable. She's untrustworthy. She's a politician. She talks out of both sides of her fucking mouth. And um, and fuck her and fuck Trump. You know, fuck them in the same breath. So he's a fascist, authoritarian. If anything, I like him a little bit better because he speaks stream of consciousness, and I can relate to him actually talking. Uh, to us like people, instead of talking above us or over our heads, they're actually talking to us directly. Now, fuck both of them when it comes to war. He seems like he'll be more, you know, less of a warmonger, but they're both going to... He's passing nukes out like fucking candy. Um, he believes everything. National Enquirer says Ted Cruz's father was the, you know, killed JFK, and he fucking believed it. And uh, passing nukes out to everybody, uh, talking about dropping nukes and shit. He's got a novel approach, talking about getting out of NATO, maybe Israel, fucking Palestine. I don't know. He's um, all over the fucking map on that, but he seems to, she's 100% Kissinger-esque. It has liked every war she's ever come across. She thinks it makes her tough. So she's a piece of shit, okay? She isn't just a bitch. She's a piece of shit bitch. She wants to expand the empire, just like Obama and just like George W. And really, it's been a bipartisan Washington consensus empire. 900 military bases, you know, 150 countries. The idea is if we control the world, then we can, uh, it's best for American interest if we could control the whole world. So it's an empire. It's what Hitler, we're the lone superpower. It's what Hitler was going for, but we actually achieved it. And we're supposed to be better because we do things respectfully. We do things proportionally. We try to do things, you know, um, the rules of engagement. Don't shoot your deserters. Have, you know, military tribunals. But the war on terror is throwing all that shit out, right? Guantanamo Bay, indefinite uh, detention. You can murder anybody, assassinating people um, all over the fucking world. And, um, you know, we're all over the place. So... When it comes to war and the war on drugs, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson are both 100%. But when it comes to poverty and homelessness, the third leg of my three, uh, you know, sort of pronged test there, the uh, poverty, I, Gary Johnson will not, his anarcho-capitalism will not solve poverty. There's some things that profits don't increase. So private prisons, so you've uh, made an incentive to go out and label people criminals. Are you sure everybody's a criminal being thrown in jail, or are you just looking for motherfuckers so you can get them processed and fill those beds with heads, and you can get paid for each one of those heads that are in your prison beds, even though perhaps they didn't even need to be there in the first place. So prisons, pollution, you know, if I dump a bunch of fucking oil, you know, just right here in the fucking yard, uh, what incentive does it for anybody, for me to pick it up or anybody else to pick that shit up? Yeah, I might get in groundwater, but who gives a shit, right? It'll go in someone else's groundwater, perhaps. Maybe it'll go in my own. Um, but if I do that, then there's no profit incentive. It would take a government agency to uh, apply people to clean that shit up. So for like, you know, there's been a lot of... Um, I don't know, big environmental disasters that it took the government to clean up. So pollution, and the, capitalism doesn't solve pollution. Capitalism doesn't solve homelessness. Capitalism doesn't solve poverty. In fact, the capitalism very much needs a poor class. So somebody's doing the janitor work. Somebody's doing the fucking, you know, landscaping and the shit work that white people won't do, the Mexican labor. So that's why we need a poor class for capitalism because someone has to do the shit labor. And so, in a way, capitalism can't ever solve poverty and homelessness because it very much depends upon it. It depends upon it. The rich people are, don't want to do that stupid shit, so they'll fucking give it to somebody else for five bucks an hour. You know, cheap fucking labor for them. Cheap-ass labor. So, and we're wage slaves, right? So, just because there's uh, poverty, there's one million poor people in Kentucky, that's 25%. There's homelessness in every fucking major American city. There's police brutality, police corruption, military industrial complex. There's so much shit that's going on. Uh, Trump nor Hillary will solve either one of them. Trump is more honest. He's actually talking to us. Hillary is not talking to us. Hillary's never fucking talked to us. She's always talked above us, and she probably treats Bill Clinton like a little fucking, you know, Bill needs to be on a leash. Ha, 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 someone was laughing. No, he doesn't. Poor guy is all, you know, getting doped up on Oxycontin and shit. Let that motherfucker, let that, you know, bull roam. Let him go sow his fucking oats. Who gives a shit? Yeah, he stayed loyal to her, so maybe people might actually like him or, you know, keep him as a respectable. He's stuck around, right? He's stuck around. He's got staying power. Um, but that's, uh... 
Let him fuck whoever he wants to fuck. She doesn't need to be controlling people and making people heal. That's the problem. The oppressors, the fascists. I don't give a fuck if you're a man or a woman. Fucking asshole, right? Just somebody wants to be shitty to you for no fucking reason. But you're trying to make promises to me, but you say the Schedule 1, you're going to take marijuana off of Schedule 1 to Schedule 2 so we can research it? Fuck you. I've done plenty of fucking research on my own, and I've read it lots, and it's all over the place. And then hemp. So the argument against it that it's not the right, my own fucking body, it's a whip of a substance compared to cigarettes and alcohol, and it's just bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. You're lying to us. The older generation is lying to the younger generation. They've been lying to us for years. And that's the only reason it's a gateway drug is because once you've seen that they've all fucking lied, every single one of them fucking lied, the 60s and 70s, that, ha that happened to our parents. The parents are the baby boomers. If they weren't part of the 60s and 70s, well, sad for them. But if they were, that means they were doing PCP, LSD, fucking acid. They were doing all the drugs. The counter-cultural revolution, the sexual revolution, the inter when integration happened, the anti-war movement. So much shit was happening during that fucking time frame. And you're going to tell me you, you didn't smoke weed, and if you did smoke weed, you think it's just as bad as a Schedule One narcotic? So it's like heroin? It's crack? Fuck you! Hungry, happy, sleepy. Alcohol makes you fucking stupid. It makes you out of your fucking mind. I would rather have the all the roads filled up with a bunch of potheads smoking pot and driving than a bunch of drunks driving. Fuck that. That's so stupid. To have drunks driving around, alcoholics fucking drunk out of your head, it slows your reaction time, it makes blurry things, like so you will fucking almost guarantee a crash with a bunch of drunks, and with a bunch of potheads help, there might be not be one fucking crash, if anything, everybody be driving five miles an hour. Hungry, happy, sleepy, those are the side effects. Hungry, happy, sleepy. Hungry, you might eat too many Doritos. Uh, happy, you smile a little bit, you enjoy life, everything, makes everything better, makes your food better, makes your sleep better, makes your drinks better, makes whatever you're doing better, and uh, sleepy, uh, see, hungry, happy, sleepy, so makes you, might go to, you know, have a mid-afternoon nap, you might have a siesta, that's the worst that can happen with a pothead, hungry, happy, sleepy, those are the side effects, that's it. Heroin is very addictive, crack is addictive, cocaine is addictive, mescaline is hallucinogenic, you'll start seeing shit, shrooms, acid, you'll start seeing fucking peyote, you'll see different illusions, and you know, but marijuana, there's no hallucinogens, it's mild stimulant, it just makes you happier, so it doesn't make you go out of your gourd, and it's not addictive, and you can't die from it, the only way you can die from marijuana is if too much smoke. So you actually die of smoke inhalation and lack of oxygen. You don't actually die of the marijuana. So you could smoke a whole fucking acre of marijuana and you would not die. You cannot overdose on marijuana. Um, and so in it, there's cancer and glaucoma and uh, anorexia and depression. It covers a lot of fucking ailments, okay? And uh, so, yeah, and at the very core of it, we're Americans. We have a right to our own body. If I want to drink uh, fucking gasoline, if I want to drink bleach, if I want to take a fork and jab it in my eye, you're going to make bleach and gasoline and forks illegal to protect me, beat me up, throw me in a cage, and then put a label on me with some fucking bullshit charges? That's to help me, right? Fuck you. You're not helping me. You're very much destroying and hurting me. Now, a little love, if there was a problem, if I was on crack, and I was stealing, and I couldn't support myself and shit, then, yes, you intervene and uh, love me and get me to a health clinic. That is a health crisis. That's a public health crisis. That is not, I don't want, you know, perhaps there's a last alternative. Yeah, throw that person in the fucking clink and then dry them out that way. But, you know, love and compassion, it's got to be through love and compassion. That's the only way anybody will ever get better. The only way you can get their humanity back is with love and compassion. And throwing them in a jail, treating them like fucking dogs, yelling at them and, you know, oppressing them and do this, do that, or I'll beat you up and rape them. And uh, fucking rapist jailers in America, yeah, we have fucking jailers who rape. And that's probably the biggest argument against Donald Trump is he just keeps on bragging about the cops as if the cops could do no wrong. The militarization of the police is a huge problem. It's, there's police brutality happening all over the place. People are getting fucking shot, judged during execution. Or, uh, there's no fucking judicial system. They're bypassing the judicial system and straight up public executing us. The capital punishment. They're giving us capital punishment right out on the streets. 
And that's a problem for Trump just to blindly accept that shit. He's a fucking fascist, man. He's going to be in favor, you know, saying, you know, about the wars and bombing ISIS and shit. What are we going to do with our standing army? What are we going to do with the standing army of police? These motherfuckers, we, he's going to go after all the Muslims and find all the Muslims and find all the immigrants and find all the guns and then find all, you know what I mean? Like, we're this close. We're a police state. We're on the verge of a Nazi Germany police state. The police have all the power. they got state power. It's relative calm and peace around. They're the ones that control every fucking thing. They're the biggest gang, the biggest dog on the block. And the idea is that nothing else will pop up because they'll fucking quash everything. But what if they're fucking corrupt? What if they're fucking robbing, raping, murdering, and doing all the shit that you think that, you know, they're there to protect us from the criminals from doing so, fuck Hillary, she's such a fucking bitch, and she's untrustworthy, that's absolutely true, she's got those big psychotic eyes, she cannot empathize with me, and if she's ordering Bill around like a fucking dog, why don't you actually live in a man's shoes, she's got a daughter, but in, unless a woman has a son, she will not understand what men go through, if anything, shut up Bill, do as I fucking tell you, yeah, if you're